Established in 1973, the World Rally Championship is an epic battle against the elements and the clock. Man and machine must master everything from snow-packed forest tracks in biting cold to rock-strewn mountain passes in the blistering heat. The battle is intense and always spectacular. So here's everything you need to know about WRC. Rallying is a type of motorsport where cars drive at speed on all kinds of terrains, on asphalt, gravel or snow, with cars built to the highest specifications of safety. The rally is divided into several stages, which are individual timed sections. Cars typically set off at two minute intervals and the goal is to finish each one as quickly as possible. Stages vary in length and difficulty. The total time taken in all stages is accumulated and the crew with the lowest overall time at the end of the rally wins. With cars covering such long distances, drivers have a co-driver to navigate and tell them what is expected on the road ahead. They communicate with drivers over a radio headset within their helmets, and their role is critical in ensuring they complete the stage as quickly and safely as possible. The co-driver is also in charge of the administration and timekeeping, and sometimes they even drive the car in between stages to give the drivers a rest, as crews can be on the road for long parts of the day. They're also in charge of the roadbook, which provides detailed information about the challenging terrains and conditions they will encounter during the event, and helps guide them from stage to stage on public roads, showing the allotted time it should take to move between time controls. With more than 50 crews competing at each WRC event, sticking to a strict schedule is vital to keep things running smoothly and safely. Crews must arrive at the next stage or service at a specific time, and because they drive on public roads between stages, all cars must be road legal and follow highway regulations at all times. Otherwise, the local authorities may have a word. You can't go all the way back to service. Right? I can go. No. No, but I know I can. But if you allow me, no. Too dangerous. Yes, but I can drive go slowly. A co-driver's pace notes are a vital way of describing the route the team will be driving. These notes tell the driver exactly what to expect in the next few corners throughout the whole rally, but they're slightly more complicated than the arcade games of the 1990s. Before the rally starts, crews compete a reconnaissance run, or recce, of all the stages, which takes a couple of days. They drive through the stages at low speeds, taking notes on the course's features such as the severity of corners, distance between turns, surface changes, jumps, bumps and other hazards like rocks, potholes and fences. These notes are converted into shorthand and are now pace notes, which you'll hear the co-driver guide the driver during the rally. There are many different ways of writing pace notes, and there's no one standard. Each crew has their own language that works for them, but all give roughly the same information in pursuit of the ultimate goal of maximizing speed in order to take victory. WRC is the top tier of rallying in the world, with the top crews competing in the Rally 1 class, whereas the beginner categories are Junior WRC or WRC 3. Top teams contest 13 rounds over 10 months to decide who will become world champions. Drivers such as Sebastian Loeb, Sebastian Ogier, Carlos Sainz, Juha Kankinen, Walter Roll, Marcus Grolmholm, Tommy Mackinnon and Colin McRae have their names etched into motorsport history due to their daring deeds on the way to winning rallying's ultimate prize, with Calo Rovenpera the youngest driver in history to claim the crown. To win, crews need to claim the highest amount of points over the course of a season, which traditionally starts in Monte Carlo in January. 
Drivers can earn up to 30 points per event. Being first in the overall classification on Saturday night will earn them 18 points, with 15 on offer for second place, 13 for third, all the way down to a single point for finishing in 10th place. The final day brings another point scoring opportunity, with the top seven drivers on Sunday all scoring additional points. And the final push is for the Wolf Power Stage, where the top five score extra points from five to one, just for being the quickest on the last stage of the rally. Rally 1 regulations have been specifically developed to fast forward the WRC towards a more sustainable future. With the current generation of hybrid engine cars powered by 100% fossil free fuel and often driving in between stages using only electric power. The Hyundai, Toyota and M Sport Ford Rally 1 cars feature a 100 kilowatt hybrid unit, which is coupled with a 1.6 litre turbocharged internal combustion engine to produce a powertrain with 500 brake horsepower. And they sound incredible. Drivers can utilize additional hybrid power boost during every stage, activated through the throttle pedal, while further bursts of energy can be released after regeneration during braking. The additional 130 horsepower is managed through three homologated engine maps, which teams can select based on the type of stage and weather conditions. All vehicles undergo major modifications, including a reinforced chassis, roll cages for safety, advanced suspension systems and high-tech aero parts to maximize both performance and safety. The second tier of challengers in the Rally 2 class are also four-wheel drive, 1.6-litre turbocharged beasts, but no hybrid unit means they are slower over a stage by comparison to the Rally 1 machines. These cars compete for the WRC2 Championship, where the crews must nominate a maximum of seven rallies to count towards their championship challenge, with crews' best six results contributing to the final standings. Rally 3 is the newest class within the WRC family with lower powered cars that give drivers working their way up the ladder a chance to experience four wheel drive for the first time and allowing new talents to flourish on the world scene. Other competitions to look out for are the One Make Junior WRC Championship, where drivers under the age of 29 battle for glory over a shortened season in identical machinery, and the WRC Masters Cup for competitors over 50 that haven't lost their need for speed. There are numerous titles up for grabs across the course of a WRC season, so there's always something to fight for. All events start with a shakedown. This is the chance for the drivers to use their cars in anger for the first time on the event following the recce and get a feel for the road surface where drivers are allowed to do multiple runs. This is usually followed by a ceremonial start to get the event officially underway. Then from Friday, the real competition begins, with each rally featuring a number of timed sections, known as special stages, on closed roads, over approximately 300 kilometers in distance. Stages are sometimes informally called tests, and you'll also hear groups of stages referred to as loops. This is when a set of stages are driven once in the morning and again in the afternoon, completing two passes of the same loop of stages in a single day. Yellow boards at the stage end precede the flying finish, the point where timing for every stage ends. Yellow boards lie approximately 50 meters before the stage ending red flying finish boards, with the name originating from the cars driving at full speed and flying when crossing the finish line. Super special stages are ones that take place in small areas and sometimes within stadiums, allowing spectators to get close to the action and see the cars going head to head on a closed circuit. This is the only time we see drivers going against each other directly during a rally event. And the final stage of the rally on Sunday is known as the Wolf Power Stage, where winning is worth extra points for the top five drivers for setting the fastest time. It's not going to be it's enough. It's not enough. It's He's gone. lost it. Robert Pear and Halton have won. Unbelievably, a lead change once again at the very final stage.
teams are based in a service park at Rally HQ, which is accessed at the predetermined time to allow team technicians to perform mechanical work on their cars. There are usually three service sessions at the beginning, middle and end of the day. Service is tightly governed and time penalties are applied if a competitor exceeds the allotted time in service. At the end of each day's competition, cars are held in a secure park ferme overnight with no access for team members. But once out on the road, crews are on their own and should it be necessary, they have to perform repairs during stages and on the road sections. So as well as being fit, fast and well organised, crews must have a high level of technical knowledge and be first class mechanics in order to keep themselves in the hunt for glory. The adaptability of driver and co-driver means that it's really never over until it's over. And a roadside repair may be the difference between success and failure. Road services in WRC can be critical to determining the outcome of an event. Events begin with Rally 1 cars running in championship order, which on loose and dusty surfaces can be a big disadvantage as the front running cars sweep the stages. This makes the road smoother, cleaner and grippier for the cars behind, allowing them to go faster and following in the preceding car's wheel tracks. But on the tarmac and asphalt services, being first on the road can be advantageous for the opposite reasons. As more cars pass through the stage, mud and gravel is deposited onto the surface, making it more slippery and easier to make a mistake. Regardless of the surface, the final two days see the Rally 1 cars switch to running in order of the event classification. So the overnight rally leaders will always be the last car on the road and the final crew to complete the power stage. Competitors who retire due to mechanical issues or accidents are allowed to restart the following day, subject to their car being safe to continue. For every special stage missed following a retirement, competitors incur a 10-minute penalty to be added to the fastest stage time in their category. This restart rule allows teams to continue the rally and still fight for points. Drivers have fought back from early misfortune to podium positions and are still eligible to earn power stage points on Sundays. Rallying is both a marathon and a sprint. Every round of the WRC season will be broadcast around the globe with live coverage of every stage and full onboard footage available from all the top cars streamed direct to your chosen device on Rally TV. So there's no excuse to miss all the highs, lows and adrenaline pumping, physics defying action of the world's most spectacular motorsport. Right, shut up, middle, into.